Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak and today we are going to be showing you shrimp scampi. It's a quick, easy, five minute recipe. We're going to be using some uh, garlic scapes. Garlic scapes are predominantly available in the first couple weeks of June in the Midwest here. Uh, just check with your local farmer's market to find the garlic scapes. I'm going to show you how to utilize these, but this, that's what makes this recipe so unique is that instead of using the bulb of garlic, which normal shrimp scampi recipes call for, we're going to be using the garlic scapes. Gives you a little sweeter flavor and a little bit less intense in that strong uh, flavor of garlic as well. I'm going to show you how to cut that up, and I already have some diced up over here. And garlic scapes are the part of the garlic that shoots out. This will turn into either seeds, which will then be propagated into more garlic for your fall, or you can cut this off and then you can deep fry the top part and use the bottom part as almost like you would minced garlic, but remember it's not as sharp or strong as garlic, so you're going to need to use more garlic scapes than you would if it was just a regular clove of garlic. Now this guy's going to naturally kind of tie up into almost a pretzel shape. Work, work with one at a time on this and just lay it out as best you can on your cutting board. And with your knife you're just going to cut very thin strips. If any of the garlic is dried out, any of the garlic scape is dried out, go ahead and cut that throw it away and then just use the real fresh stuff. You can see uh, the stuff we got just a few days ago at the farmer's market. All that great garlic water is coming out of it. It's nice and juicy right now. And I'm going to use four garlic scapes for this recipe. Just to repeat, if you only have garlic bulbs, probably just cut it down to two garlic uh, cloves and use that instead of all these garlic scapes. Uh, this will kind of affect the end product of your, uh, your, your, your dish because this, ours will be a little bit greener than yours, but the flavor will be very similar. Let's start with our shrimp. We're going to turn our burner on high heat. We're going to grab our shrimp from our cooler here. And the shrimp has been peeled and deveined, and I took the entire shells off. My son Ben helped me out with this. He, uh, he originally, we were kind of toying with, should we leave the, the, the tails on, should we take them off? We decided to take them off completely. If you want to leave the little tail on, just let your guests know, obviously, they're still there, so they're not biting down into it. Ours are completely removed. And then we deveined them, so you can see we took out that vein that runs along the back there. Our pan is heated up. We're going to add about two tablespoons of oil. And it won't take long for it to heat up. We're going to add two tablespoons of butter. And the reason why we add two different types of fat is we don't want one to overpower the other, and we kind of want to give that this shrimp a, a real good buttery flavor. So we're going to add the shrimp right to the pan. It's going to go really quick, so just make sure your shrimp is spread out evenly in there. And they're going to go from that gray color to a bright pink or even a red color. Again, don't forget, this is going to be on high heat. We're going to add four shallots. We're going to add our four sliced up garlic scapes. And at this point, we're just going to let this the shrimp cook until it gets red all the way through. You may have to flip them a few times. You may have to toss the pan. We'll just let the pan sit still for a second and we'll just keep moving it around as it starts to turn colors on. As you can see, our shrimp has turned to that pink color now. So I'm going to give it one more turn, give it a flip if necessary. I'm just going to check a few of the shrimps, make sure they're cooked all the way through. The way you can tell, you get that white and they're pink or red on both sides. I'm going to scrape these into a bowl, a secondary bowl that I have sitting off to the side here. quickly get my pan back on the heat. I want to let this reheat or get back up to that temperature we had and now we can start adding some of our ingredients. We're going to add some white wine, we're going to add some lemon juice, some paprika, and a little bit of salt. First with our wine, and we're going to add about one cup of wine. We're going to let this uh, just go with a regular Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, nothing too oaky or nothing too strong in flavor, definitely nothing too sweet either. 
while this comes up to a boil, you can go ahead and add your uh, lemons. I have two lemons here that I've, I've juiced uh, one and a half, and I'm going to squeeze the last half for you in there. I just use my lemon juicer here. We're going to wait for this to come to a boil before we add our uh, other herbs in here. We can add, go ahead and add our uh, paprika. It's roughly about one quarter teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to put two pinches of salt. About a teaspoon of fresh cracked black pepper. At this point, because of all the stuff that's stuck to the bottom, we're going to take a, a flat blade spatula and scrape all that up once this comes up to a boil. We're going to kind of incorporate anything that we left in the pan from those uh, uh, shallots or the uh, garlic scapes. We're going to make sure that gets back in the sauce, and then we'll reincorporate everything once we're all finished. All right, our sauce has come up to a nice boil here. It's changed color. It's picked up a lot of that paprika flavor. We're going to want to get our flat bladed spatula. I'm going to use a, uh, a metal spatula in this. This is an all flat pan. It's, it's, it's okay to use the metal spatulas in high quality pans. I know that's a question that we get sometimes on the show, but um, as long as the pan is good quality and you're using good quality uh, utensils, this is okay. It's when you use the real cheap pans and you're using cheap utensils, I don't recommend doing that because you're going to scrape up some of that metal into your sauce and that's never good. Now. Once your sauce is reduced, now's the time to add lemon zest. This is one lemon that I've zested. And we're going to add about three tablespoons of parsley. We're going to stir this in. Bring our heat back up. I'm going to toss my Shrimp back in here. And that's it. There's your shrimp scampi. Simple as that. All I'm going to do is grab some plates really quick. I'll plate this up for you. Maybe get some garlic bread going. Alright, so I'm going to plate this up. Some other variations of just serving this straight up is to go ahead and uh, serve with some garlic bread, some pasta maybe, some nice herb and garlic pasta would go great with this, or uh, even some uh, roasted peppers. And I was tasting some of this sauce while we were getting the plates all lined up, um, and it is delicious. The, the garlic scapes still have a little crunch to them, a little texture still in there. I'm going to serve this with a few pieces of garlic bread. So there's something to help mop up that sauce. But there you go. Shrimp scampi made with garlic scapes. A seasonal delight. you got to try them if you see them at the farmer's market. This dish probably took us about five, maybe ten minutes at most. Try it out. It'll become a favorite of yours. Thanks for watching Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak, and I'll see you real soon.